It is my pleasure to welcome Reverend Elizabeth Stamper, who will be speaking to us today about the inner journey, coming home to yourself. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for inviting me back. I really enjoy being in this room with these beautiful humans. So coming home to yourself, what a journey that is. I think we spend our whole life trying to come home to ourselves. And first of all, I want to just say the self that I'm talking about today, what it is and what it's not. So there's the self with, let's say it's a self with a small s, um, sometimes called the ego. But when someone would come up to you at a party or you're just meeting someone, they say, so tell me about yourself. Then what you might say, and what a lot of us say, well, we say what we do, where we've come from, um, where we live now, maybe something about our interests. But that's not the self that I'm talking about. And I'm not talking about the self that's just a voice in the head that kind of narrates your life. It kind of chatters on, and it's always creating memories of the past and projecting things into the future, that voice that identifies a lot with the physical body and yet also doesn't really, likes to live a little bit out of the physical body, a little bit above or just up in this one little room up here in the head. So that would be the small self. So the self I want to talk about today is, is a self that is a aspect of universal consciousness that is the part of universal consciousness, part of the source energy, that happens to be inhabiting your body right now, and yours and yours and yours and mine. So it's that aspect of all that is that's using this location of the body to be its home base. So we come home to find self in the body. You know, there's a famous James Joyce short story. I haven't read it, but I've heard the first line and it really stuck to, in my mind. It said, it says, Mr. Duffy always lived a short distance from his body. <laughs> and, and, and you can kind of, sometimes you see people uh, what, like walking down the hall or walking down the street and they're like leading, like they're living up here and you see that, or you see someone just kind of lost. And part of what I'm talking about today is about how we actually land in this body as a sacred temple, a vehicle for our life's purpose, and as a, as a home, really a beautiful home for our soul. So soul is another word that is used for self in some uh, traditions. And in uh, Judaism, there is like a beautiful saying, I can't say it in, in Hebrew, but basically it translates as, um, uh, oh dear God, thank you for giving me this pure soul. Thank you for giving me this pure soul. And relating that to also the teaching in, in the Torah or the Old Testament, that when God created everything, she said things, she, she spoke the word and then they appeared. Maybe it didn't say she in the Old Testament as we know it, but um, the word was spoken. So let there be light, you know, let there be earth, let there be all that, and then it, and it became what it was. But when it came to 
the human beings, this is the myth, this is the story that God didn't just speak the word, here's the clay forms, but God leaned over and breathed that soul and animated that clay to become a human body, those human bodies. And there's something really beautiful about that. And it connects, too, to the idea and the practice we all do that when we want to find peace, when we want to connect to peace, when we want to calm our own nervous system, what do we do? We take a deep breath and we let it go. It's like we want to inhale that Holy Spirit back into our being, that source of peace. And the way that I'm talking about God is not a concept. The way I'm talking about self is not a concept as much as it is a verb and an event, a, a happening, a process, always changing, always evolving, always here. So thought, that little, that little place far away from Mr. Duffy's body, you know where he lived, likes to make things, it likes to make this process, these, these ideas into these things like a chair or a microphone or just a physical clump and identify that's what it is. But when we're talking about the self, we're talking about consciousness before there's a body, before there's a clump of matter, before there's a thought, a thing, just vast, opened spaciousness, but alive, and also has all these most beautiful qualities that we would ever want to experience. So how do we know self, or how do we know the source of self? We know it by how it feels inside us. We know it's by its qualities. And we, as as these little individual souls or little little selves with the capital S, these selves are a part of that universal consciousness. We are inextricable. You can no more separate you from all that is. I can no more separate me from all that is then you could take, separate the wave from an ocean or a sunbeam from the sunlight. So imagine now that <laughs> within you, this life force that's animating you right now is that spark of life, that breath of God breathed into you, doing its job, giving you life right now. Giving you breath, giving you everything, including peace. So I want to try an experiment right now, and I want you, I'd like you to help me. I was um, invited, oh gosh, it's got to be 25 or 30 years ago, to come to um, a detention center for teenage girls. And I was invited to come there and teach the meditation. And so I had a couple of hours. And first I gave them a talk about the, their self, their inner being. And then I led the meditation. So let's just imagine, let me just replay that for you. And if you would just, if you want to, imagine that you're one of those girls that afternoon. I could have been one of those girls the way I was as a teenager. Um, so imagine if you were one of those girls, some of you would be just kind of lying on the floor here around me. Some of you would be sitting in chairs. And at this point in your lives, you've already been through a whole lot of trauma, a whole lot of really, really difficult experiences. And I have over here to my left, 
a big white erase board. Can you see it? Here's my big erase board, okay? And it's got nothing on it, it's just white. But imagine, if you will, that this board is emanating this most beautiful light. I want, I want to see you, so I'm moving my board, my easel over a little bit. Um, so here's my easel with the white erase board. And it's emanating this beautiful light. And when you see this light, you feel this light, it's just, it's just beautiful. It just makes your heart feel good. And this is your soul. This is yourself. All you young girls, this is yourself. So when you were born, this is the self. It's what it looked like, just bright with beauty and life force, happiness. And if you know anything about babies, if you've ever been with babies, as long as their needs are met, they're pretty content. As long as they're not in any kind of physical uh, discomfort, um, if their emotional and social needs are met, they're pretty chill. They're be beautiful. And you can, you can smile at them, and they will smile back at you. A megawatt smile. So this is who you are when you're born. But then what happens? Stuff happens. And here I'm picking up my gray uh, marker. When big things happen that are too much for you, they're really painful, really scary, then it's like on this white erase board, which is yourself, your consciousness, big X right there, right there on your body, in your mind, in your history. And then if there's someone around who you trust, who knows what to do, hold you, comfort you, validate you, love you, then here comes the eraser. Pretty soon, it's erased. But if there's no one there to pick up that eraser in that moment, then your psyche, the brilliant mind that we all have, will create a way to bury that big experience. And that's buried in what we call the subconscious mind, buried in the body. The body keeps the score. And so that's like... Here's another big eraser. This is the black one this time. And it's just covering over that big gray X, covering it over. I don't see it anymore. I don't feel it anymore. I've covered it over. But if enough of these things start to happen to you, and they have actually happened to all of us, then we've got this beautiful light getting blocked out. X by X by covering by covering by X by X by X until... And of course, the world is telling you, don't look inside yourself. Look outside, pay attention. And so we're looking outside and nobody is reflecting that light back to us, or very rarely. So we start to think that all I am is all this darkness inside me. I don't know who I am. Who am I? Tell me about yourself. Tell me about yourself. So what meditation can do, meditation is a way of saying to ourselves, I know that light is there. I know it's there. It's just covered up. And meditation takes your mind, instead of going here and there and everywhere, it takes your mind, it takes that eraser, and it just starts to like open up the space so that you start to be aware of the light inside you. You just get glimpses. You get moments. You're blown away by just the tiniest glimpse of your own light. And the other part of doing this revealing of the beautiful, whole, peaceful, blissful, you know what the Hindus call 
the attributes of the self, satchitanan, truth, consciousness, and bliss. So the other uh, road we travel to heal this consciousness and reveal that light again is therapy. It's psychotherapy in whatever form it comes in. But with that therapist, years later, can be that one, can be that one that we wished had been there when the thing first happened, but picks up that eraser, guides you, in a way, to your own self and say, you can heal this. Here's the eraser. And you go inside and you clear. You clear and you clear and you clear and more and more and more of your beautiful light emanates from you. So that was the talk that I gave them. And then we did a meditation, you know, for maybe 20, 20 minutes or so. Girls don't have a very long attention span. But at the end, they talked to me. And one of the last comments I want to share with you, because it meant so much, was a young girl who said to me, all my life, I just believed I was just damaged, damaged goods. And there was nothing good about me, nothing good inside me. I don't believe that anymore. I don't believe that anymore. And that's the opening of a door, isn't it? A possibility. And I, I don't want to say that I think my talk convinced her, but I think that what she was able to do was during the meditation, she was able to drop all that busy mental ju self-judgment, all that stuff that goes on in our head, all the stuff that keeps poor Mr. Duffy out of his body. You know, and she was able to drop it for a moment or, or two by grace because we are connected to that source. It doesn't leave us. The light never leaves us. It, it may look at times when we leave our body that it went out, but it just went somewhere else. So I believe that she felt in that moment, in that meditation, and I think a lot of us did in that room, because there was a lot of grace there. Why was there a lot of grace there? Was it because there was a lot of need there? And there was a lot of openness, willingness, willingness to trust. Maybe what she's saying isn't a bunch of malarkey. Maybe there's something to this. Maybe if I drop everything else and just go deep, I could find some of that light inside myself. So may you shine your light, your beautiful light, out into the world every chance you get. And when you can't see it, find someone who can hand you an eraser and bring you home to yourself and bring you home to yourself. So thank you, everyone. Well, let me just, um, let me close then with a very short poem. And I, this came to me also right, probably right around that time, um, 30 years ago or so. And I want to dedicate it to this morning to all those young girls, wherever they might be, today, but all the young people, all the young people. So you can close your eyes if you like. And it's morning. And let's say you just stepped outside onto your balcony or your patio. And it's just a beautiful morning. And you're gazing up at the sky. Morning. A small seabird is circling the sky. She is pulling back the clouds, undraping the day. 
small seabird circling the sky, pulling back the clouds and undraping today. And it never occurs to her that she is too small for this awesome task. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.